Hey, what's up 3Ders? 3D Theory here. Today, we're revisiting the spring-loaded pillbox design. As a refresher, I take multivitamins, omega-3 fish oils, and vitamin D3 every day. It's part of my daily routine. But let's be honest, it's not exactly exciting. That's when the idea came to me. What if I designed a pillbox that was actually fun to use? And so, the spring-loaded pillbox idea was born. I put the idea up as a poll on my YouTube channel, giving you four different options. Out of 41 votes, the spring-loaded pillbox won with 46% of the votes. Turns out, you guys were just as excited about it as I was. I jumped right into the design process, starting with the sketch and jumping into Maya, a 3D modeling software I'm comfortable with. It's fantastic for freeform 3D modeling, but I quickly ran into a problem. Making changes was a nightmare. I'd lose track of old files, redo work unnecessarily, and find myself digging through folders just to figure out where I left off. The more I tried to tweak the design, the more I realized Maya wasn't built for this. It's amazing for movies and animations, but for designing real-world functional objects, not so much. Everyone kept telling me, try CAD software. It'll make your life so much easier. So I did. I enrolled in a few classes at a local community college to learn SolidWorks, and it changed everything. The difference was night and day. Instead of 3D modeling with vertices, edges, and faces, SolidWorks starts with logical, geometry-based sketches that build into 3D models. Every line, every sketch relation, it all made sense. With this fresh perspective, I realized something painful but necessary. I had to scrap my original design and start over. So over the course of a few nights, I redesigned everything from scratch, this time in SolidWorks. I modeled, printed, and finally ended up with a prototype that actually worked the way I wanted. Before I even touched the software, I grabbed my mechanical pencil with blue lead and started sketching on paper. I laid out the front design, measuring everything in millimeters with calipers. The seven-day slot tray needed precise spacing, so I crunched the numbers with my calculator. The first big challenge, stopping the tray from flying out when the trigger releases the spring. I also needed a way to keep the spring from sliding around in the main body. This can just come right out. So if the spring were to have shot it out, it would just fly out. I did put a little half sphere there and essentially it would kind of stop but if you were to just lift it it comes right out and let's say i did have a spring mechanism in there there was nowhere for me to be able to affix it the back is closed off so if for some reason the spring came out during operation it would just kind of be free floating in there as well as a defined range of motion for the trigger some of the flaws of the old design was this trigger that had no set range of motion it would just open up so i wanted to make sure to fix that part no more flopping around i designed the stoppers to prevent the slot tray from launching across the room and a simple trigger mechanism that held its tension with a compression spring. And then the 3D printed spring trials began. My first plan, a fully 3D printed spring. My first iteration, 3D printed, but it was too rigid. My second curve design wouldn't take the sweep feature in SolidWorks for some reason. All right guys, so we're here in SolidWorks and I got my 3D printed spring curve here. And when I try to run a sweep on it, click on the sketch that I want to use to sweep across the curve here and when I click the curve it doesn't work and even when I click the green check mark it says sweep operation failed to complete but I don't know what the reason is so I grabbed a spring model off of Maker World, modified it in Maya and 3D printed it. It was way too strong. The tray wouldn't even stay shut. All right guys, so here's the functioning spring. I have a little square cutout so that it fits right in. So here is that 3D printed spring and I got the slot in there and the trigger is engaged and I knew it wasn't going to work the moment I pushed it to try to screw it in. This is just not strong enough to hold that amount of force coming from that 3D printed spring. So that's when I knew I got to switch over to a, a weaker compression spring. At this point, I had to accept the reality. 3D printed springs just weren't cutting it at the moment. Time for plan B. I quickly designed a filler block with a post to hold a metal compression spring where the old 3D printed spring would go. That's when I made the filler block with a little post that'll fit right into that square, just like that, which will be glued down. And then I got my little compression spring here and I'll glue it to the post. And that would provide just enough spring tension, just like that. This change made all the difference. Instead of fighting against the limitations of 3D printed springs, I integrated traditional components where they made sense. Then came the final refinements. 
brass threaded inserts for the M2 screws, and tiny air holes to prevent pressure buildup from affecting the tray smoothly closing. So with this ginormous thing, I think there was two issues that weren't allowing the tray to go fully in. I think there was some issues with tolerance here, but also I'm thinking there is no air holes. It's real tight, it's just airtight in there. So when I try to push it in, it doesn't really go through because it's just an airtight pocket in there. And just for visuals here, here's the size difference. This is the main body of the new version. So what I did here is I created two air holes, one there and one there, so that when the tray goes in and out, there's air pockets there that can release that pressure from inside. With everything locked in, I sent the files over to Bamboo Studio for slicing. I use PETG because it's tough and durable, perfect for this build. I increased the wall thickness, infill density, and used a honeycomb infill for solid strength. I incorporated simple 3D printing design principles like the use of 45 degree angles and bridging to make post-processing easier. And then came the moment of truth. I swung open the door to my little 3D print farm, and there it was, the main body and slot tray, cooling on the PEI sheets of my Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers. Assembly was straightforward. I used a soldering iron to heat press the brass inserts into their holes. I glued the filler block into place along with its spring. I pushed in the stoppers on the slot tray. Then I installed the trigger and hooked up the metal compression spring and screwed the backing into place. Building this out's fairly easy and straightforward. So the first thing I'm gonna work on is the back piece here. I'll grab my glue and I'm just gonna throw in some glue just like that. And we'll get that filler block I created. Just hold it there for a second. Then I'm just gonna put a little glue on the sides here so that when I get the spring and pop it on, it'll stay right there just like that. Next, I'll just put the stoppers on that I created, one there and one there. And when I slide this through, it won't pop out. But just so I don't have this thing sliding in and out when I'm building the trigger mechanism, I'm gonna take it out for a sec. And the trigger mechanism's very easy. I 3D printed this post along with it, and we just pop the trigger mechanism, and line up the holes there, and I'm gonna just stick that post through. Now, I'm not gonna glue it in or anything for this prototype. It's just gonna be held with tension. Now, here's that bigger spring that I ended up going with, but before it was a much smaller spring about that big, but it didn't work. So I decided to increase the size here, and there you go. That works as intended. Now, I'll stick the slot tray in there, and we'll get this part screwed in. Got my two tiny M2 screws, they're real small. Pop them in just like that. I'm gonna hold it in place, just like that. And luckily, I had this tiny little screwdriver to fit into those holes there that we're gonna be screwing in. And I'm gonna do the other side now. And I gotta use some pliers because it's kind of rubbing up on the sides there, the uh, screw cap that is. We're almost there and that's tightened in. And there you have it, it's good to go. And then it was time for the first real test. I pressed the trigger. The tray popped out. Smooth, effortless, perfect. I loaded the slots with capsules, four per slot, no problem. I then checked if the tray clicked shut properly, and it did. The spring tension was spot on. That's when I knew this was it. Even though this prototype works great, I've got some ideas for version two. Adding individual lids for each slot, like the old version, since these things shoot out like that, I'd probably like to have some sort of a door that closes to prevent them from spilling out when they open, kind of like the old version here. I thought that would be a nice little addition to make on the new version. Reducing slot tray wobble by improving the trigger connection. And another issue I'd like to fix is when you open it, it kind of wobbles like that. So. Maybe I'd have to fix some tolerances here or maybe extend it a little bit longer so it remains straight and rigid. When I say extended, I mean the uh, back here. So it'll just have a little extension like this, making sure that it stays straight. Shrinking the trigger, maybe switching it to a button, adding a lock to prevent unintentional openings. This trigger, I feel like is a little too big and kind of gets in the way. So I'd like to make it smaller and maybe push it back a little and have a hole on the bottom where the bottom of the tray has a hole for this to engage into, so the trigger mechanism doesn't sit at the front. It would sit somewhere here with a hole through it, kind of like the first iteration. This trigger mechanism on the old one had a little post here that would engage on the bottom here with this little clip, and it would push it, and it would disengage from the hole 
inside of the chamber there, if you can see it, and there's a hole that leads right through. So it'd be kind of like the same concept. Or I'll just make a simple small button somewhere so it's not so in the way. And I'd also like to make some sort of a lock that prevents it from opening unintentionally. Say you have it in a travel bag or something like that. Making the entire design 100% 3D printable, no screws, just reusable clips and 3D printed springs. And I'm also thinking about throwing this design up on MakerWorld for a design competition. It would be cool to see how others might improve on it. If you're interested in seeing that happen, drop a comment below with a lowercase i in quotes. It all started with a simple sketch on paper. From that first prototype that was large, bulky, and did not function, to learning SOLIDWORKS and troubleshooting springs. This project has been a journey of learning and iteration. My biggest takeaway? Don't be afraid to scrap an old design that didn't work and start fresh with new lessons learned from the old design. Rapid prototyping is everything. Each failed version taught me something new about what works and what doesn't. This whole experience has sharpened my 3D modeling and 3D printing skills, and I'm excited to take things further. Maybe even exploring creating a system to make this producible on a medium scale, like I do with my traditional animation desk pen cups that you can get on my Etsy shop link in the description. So if you enjoyed this journey, click the like button and subscribe for more 3D printing adventures. And here's a question for you. Do you think 3D printing will ever become as common as smartphones, where everyone is designing and printing their own gadgets at home? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Well, that about wraps it up here in the tiny 3D print farm. 3D theory here. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.